Hi guys, uh, welcome to today's video. Today I will be doing the swatches of the Brustro 24 uh, Artist Gouache Colors. I have already done the unboxing of it in another video. Uh, you can go and have a look at that if you want to see the unboxing of it. So today um, this one is directed towards creating the swatches. I have created a small um, swatch card over here. Uh, they don't give you a swatch card along so I have created one where I have written down the names of these. Now, it's, since it's tubes, I've written down the name. Normally, when there are cakes, I don't really do this. But uh, it makes it much more easier then. So, I'm going to just create swatches of all of these 24 colors. So, it will be much easier for you to know uh, how these look when you're going to put them onto your uh, sheet. Because it looks a lot of times a lot different than um, it is when it is in the tube. Or at least when it looks, um, how it looks over here on the tiny swatch which they put up. So this is a cerulean blue which I am currently going to create a first swatch of. So when you create your swatches, it can be in any way. You can um, dilute them. Uh, you can create like a swatch going from a thicker to a lighter uh, paint or you can have like anything else. So uh, what I like creating is like tiny leaves. It also gives me a really nice feeling of um, getting a hold of this particular color so that's what I'm going to be creating right now so that was our cerulean blue the next one is the ultramarine so let's see how the ultramarine is I currently like how these colors are most of them are definitely pretty bright as compared to all the other ones that I've been using Especially there's one over here which is the hot pink which um, gives the impression of um, almost like a neon pink. This is the Prussian blue. I'm going to create a nice watch of this. I'm using a pretty big brush. I <laughs> should probably use a smaller one for doing these, but um, so I'll get like at least slightly better looking leaves. <laughs> and the next one is a teal. So I really like the color, how this looks in um, the tube. Let's see how it is in the palette. So I I'm using currently a um, ceramic one. I'll just turn and show to you guys about how this is. So you'll also know how much of water I'm adding to get these colors out. Oops, there's the cobalt blue here. I think I missed a color. Oh, that's great. Okay, so this is the cobalt blue. So the one that I'm having here is a teal. So thankfully I have used these colors before hence I was able to figure out what I was missing. So the cobalt blue is the one that I have missed so let's do a tiny swatch of that. Looks very similar to the ultramarine. In fact the cobalt in most of the other brands is slightly I think different looking. I've switched now to a smaller size brush. Much easier now to create these leaves. Yeah, that's good. All right, so let's move on now to the greens. There is the first one, which is the Viridian Green. It's pretty strong. You can see I've hardly used um, any water and I'm able to create a good swatch. And next we'll move on to the olive green. There's also a sap and a yellow green. You can see I have not used the olive green so far. Now 
this is a very pretty green flesh tint so this is a color which um, isn't normally part of a lot of paints and it's kind of a strange thing to say flesh tint because flesh can really be of a lot of different kinds of colors but um, maybe you can use this as a base and then build upon it you can create various other colors using this as a base like for example if I want to create like a brown or a dark brown then I can just add a little bit of brown to the flesh tint to get like a nice um, shape the next is the yellow ochre so for the swatches uh, you don't really need a lot of color and I'm increasingly getting better at creating my leaves now yeah it's a nice shade of yellow ochre next is the burnt sienna which is basically your browns they have a very nice wide range of colors so in the 24 you get a good range which is quite good because um, you don't have to keep mixing your colors of course these are all very bright so if you need like a pastely shade of everything you will have to mix your whites and next we're going to go to a burnt vienna oh sorry burnt umber the last one was burnt sienna this is a burnt umber so what happens um what's the use of writing these names down is sometimes uh, when you have your tubes you might not really put them back in the same way so it's pretty useful uh, if you because you can just like match the name on the tube with uh, the swatch so it sort of makes it much more um, easier that way now the black uh, I don't think I need to really create a swatch for the black but um, I guess there's no harm um, that I'm not going to create I think a swatch for the white considering white might be like the only color that I have to keep replacing over and over again because of the amount of white that I use but um, let's see so now we are moving to the second portion and the first color in that is uh, this really nice sap green so it looks very different over here on the swatch um, it's pretty bright considering that a lot of sap green don't look like this in most of the other brands this is the brightest version of a sap green that I have seen this reminds me of um, the grass green in uh, Dr. Phil's uh, calligraphy ink or like the Indian ink in Dr. Phil's uh, so the yellow green is um, kind of strange I would say I'm going to now switch it over here you can see how the hue looks I'm thinking of when or how I would be able to use this color it's too bright a palette but um, it does have a lot of scope probably you know by mixing a good amount of white I can create a nice texture and then maybe I can use it for creating um, objects tiny things the violet is quite strong I'm going to dilute it a little bit it's extremely quick dry So for the price range, I think it's wonderful. The next is a mauve. Mauve. Or keep getting confused as to how to pronounce it. And we're going to come to the hot pink next. I think that was something which was a shocker for me when I got um, this one. Needs a lot more water dry yeah 
that's good now hot pink this is how the hot pink looks you can see how the swatch is outside but that's not really how it is inside so this is a very shocking uh, pink that we're going to get over here right now and I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to use this I've created like some samples out of it but um, otherwise to think of painting with this I'm I'm really not sure uh, maybe like a single card for a person who's like a neon you know lover um, maybe for them a card or something but I haven't really given it a thought the next one is um, a rose so this is a very very nice one although I would have still preferred if it um, had a nice tinge of white with it it's still a very strong rose not the soothing rose so a lot of colors in this I have to like make it by myself but I think that's still okay this is a very toned down version of this um, rose We are using a crimson next. So in most of the other ones you would notice that the crimson is more like a pink. So let's see if that's the same thing over here. Mm, it isn't really like pink. Ideally it should be. Let's just add some more water and see if it starts becoming pink so on my palette it still does look a little bit like it's got a pink um, tinge to it but not really on the paper let's move now to the next one which is a scarlet so that's also going to be pretty bright in terms of the red so to get a pink is going to be hard in this palette I guess you just have to like mix and make your colors maybe mix your rose and your crimson and you might end up getting a really nice shade. My crimson and scarlet look very similar. Although on the palette it looks really different. You can see how um, the crimson does look a little pink in the palette. Not so much on the paper. Vermilion. That's the next one. Again, this is going to be pretty bright in terms of the red. It's a little orangish red, which is, again, quite nice. So I love reds. So that way I'm quite happy to have like a good variety. But yes, if, if you want a lot of pinks, then um, you might not be very happy with these options which are there. But you can always mix and make your own colors the last three the mild yellow which um, is also called as um, cobalt uh, not cobalt sorry chrome yellow the golden yellow or the chrome yellow I like I really like this color I like this more than the lemon yellow I don't know why I, I don't like the lemon yellow um, in most of the palettes or maybe it's just that you know it's a little too bright for my taste and I, I really don't know how to blend them quite nicely so I just end up avoiding it a lot more than using it up got like a bristle of the brush coming out so <laughs> it's mixed with my yellow not bad it does look pretty okay We'll do a tiny swatch of the white since we've done everything else then why leave that. We'll see how the white looks on this um, paper. We've got a cold press 300 GSM Canson paper that I'm using for making these. Um, I almost cannot see it. So it gives me a good idea of the kind of white that is on this. So that's good. So here are the 24 swatches of the Bristro gouache. I like them. They're quite nice. I hope this helps you to understand and make a decision whether uh, these are perfect for you, for your taste. And um, you can take a good um, decision of what you can make. You can mix and match. Have a good palette. Have a good swatch 
for you for yourself it's very easy to make paintings on that basis hope you like this video if you did please do um, subscribe to my channel i keep putting up a lot of things about art and uh, you can leave comments below if you have any queries thank you